Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's week five, session four of the 500 meter training plan, which means that today we're just stirring the tanks. We're gonna do 30 seconds at your 500 meter stroke rate and pace, and then we're gonna slip right into 19 and a half minutes at 20 strokes per minute, and at around about 2K plus 18 to 20, or if you wanna do your heart rate cap, then let's go for the Maffetone, which is 180 minus your age, or you can go between 65 and 75% of your maximum rowing heart rate. Okay, so this, like I say, is just stirring the tanks to make sure that uh, all our gears are greased, ready for the big race in the next session. So let's start off with a six minute warm up today. And we can do all of this by first off going to your drag factor and setting it to where you want it to be for your race when you're doing it. Okay, so this is the important part. So I don't really encourage you shifting a drag factor all over the place, but for today, if you have a specific race drag factor that you set your machine to, then set it for today's warm up and for today's session. Yeah, there's a longer one than normal there. Next up, go to your monitor and set it at eye height so you don't have to look up and don't have to look down. And then finally, go to your foot straps and set them so that they cover the bottom lace in your shoe. Or if you're in socks like me, you can bend comfortably forward at the front. Man in grey today. <sighs> anyway. Let's get into this 18 strokes a minute as always for our warm up, starting off at a nice gentle pace to get our body moving. In three, two, one, go. So not tough at all, okay? Just get that body moving. Could be that your muscles are cold. Could be that your body's cold. Could be that you're having some after effects from Session three with all those full pressure 24s. I know my shoulder's a little bit twingy today after doing that session yesterday. But what I'm hoping is that as I warm up through, well, this warm up and then into today's session, that I'll just ease off. I think I didn't stretch my shoulder afterwards yesterday, so it's my fault. Okay, so we're approaching the first minute gone. Carry on rowing at 18 strokes a minute. But maybe see about increasing your pace so that you're closer to 2k plus 20. Remember, especially when you're holding the same stroke rate, your pace comes from that big push with your legs from the front of the machine. Okay, so it's not about pulling at the back end. It's about pushing the machine away and letting that leg press the power from your legs flow into the machine okay so one more stroke and we're going to go up to 20 strokes a minute I'm going to do this for a minute and then when the minute is over we'll go up to 22 I'm basically just going to progressively go faster for a few minutes and then finish down at 18 again. I mean, in itself, it's a good workout, this warm-up, but we just have to be sure to be nice and warm for that 500 meter sprint start. Okay, so three more strokes, and I want you at 22 strokes a minute, and 2K plus 15. So here we go. Two K plus 15. Remember, your pace increases here. All come for more pressure with your legs. If you have that forward lean, 
as you push with nice straight arms it should let all that power transfer through your body and into the flywheel all right four more strokes and then we're going to go up to 24 and 2k plus 12 so here we go we're doing this for a minute and then we'll back off to 18s for the last minute you get closer to a one-to-one -one ratio when you get to 24 but it is still more of a recovery than your drive speed keep those arms straight power flows through good posture one more stroke here and down to 18s we'll just paddle home I run about 2k plus 25 just to let your body ease out of what was quite a short sharp warm up so that's one that I'll do if we find out that the machines in a live race if we're going to get like five to ten minutes to warm up I'll tend to do pretty much what we just did I might do a few really fast kind of 100 meter that's just all done 100 meter sprints just to try and liven it up but that's pretty much what I'll do if I've only got five or six minutes to warm up before a race so if you don't think that you're warm enough to start off with this 30 second sprint and carry on warming up either by continuing to row when I go over what we're doing again today or by pausing this podcast or video carry on warming up and then restart it otherwise continue moving up and down the rail have a quick drink and I'll quickly just go over one more time what we're doing today okay then one more time what we're doing today is 30 seconds at your 500 meter race pace followed by 19 and a half minutes at 20 strokes per minute and at run about 2k plus 18 to 20 or with a mafetone heart rate of 180 minus your age or at 65 to 75 percent of your maximum rowing heart rate monitor wise what i say is just set a 20 minute row and go for it or just hit just row and go for it you really that 30 second sprint it's just about doing a sprint you don't really need to come back and analyze it for its metrics um, but if you want to do that then like I I'm start to say, go to ErgMonkey and get sign up for an account, free account through them. Um, and that way you can go back and analyze it properly with lovely graphs. The Concept2 logbook will let you do the same, but the ErgMonkey one is a more attractive graph. There's a link to ErgMonkey in the description. Um, use that if you wish. All it does is track how many people I send that way. I don't get anything out of it. It's not like I'm raking in fortunes by driving you that way. Right, here we go. So... You ready for this? You're nice and warm, had a drink, you're good to go. Right, so 30 seconds at your 500 meter race pace and stroke rate, followed by 19 and a half at 20 strokes per minute, okay? In three, two, one, go. Really get it up there, as though you've just started your race. Good leg drive. Full slide. Almost there, come on. Five, three, and 
there we go so just take as long as you need rowing softly hopefully not too far of 2k plus 18 to 20 catch your breath and try to hit your pace and technique when you're recovered enough to do so it's a tough old cookie that one that frantic 30 but I much prefer doing this session the day before a race than taking a full rest day I just feel maybe it's age but I feel like I'm an old engine that just seizes up after a day's rest so I'm not on tip top form when it comes to race day if I've had a full race day the day before whereas a session like this make sure all of my moving parts continue to move which especially in a 500 meter race your moving parts are going to be moving as fast as possible so you want to make sure you feel fluid and good to go it's all about preparation really you prepare your your body to be able to peak and perform but then you've got to make sure your mind is in the right place as well so if you've found a routine that you know works for you and you're able to do that routine before races then I recommend sticking to it what you don't want of course is to end up with like a a superstition almost where if you're not wearing your lucky socks or you haven't turned the lights off 10 times well that's more OCD than superstition isn't it but you don't want to come up with preparations that will actually send you the other way if you don't get to do them but hopefully if you've got a race planned you know far enough in advance what kind of time scale you've got leading up to it so you can factor in how you taper off for the end of the week for it whether you're able to do what I'm saying or whether you're traveling somewhere and so you can't get access to a machine the day before I certainly had that when I went to Boston for the crash bees 
that had lands the day before in the small hours of the morning and not have access to a machine before the actual race so I had to factor in my race preparation that way which basically just meant doing squats and isometric holds in my hotel room very cool oh, I do miss going to Boston for the World Championships just miss Boston just love it there the Lowe's Hotel oh, it's just the perfect hotel comfiest bed in the world anyway so with any luck now that we're six minutes into this part of the row you've managed to hit your rhythm and pace by now and you're feeling strong energized and ready for your 500 meter test now I've been talking always in terms of preparation for my actual race but there's a good chance that you are watching these YouTube videos or following along with the podcasts completely in your own time and therefore you're just going to be on your own in the gym or in your spare room shed garage wherever but regardless it's just you versus you rather than going online and racing anyone else in which case the important part is the mental fortitude to get through it so you'll get probably about 250 meters in at which point you'll tip over the edge where it'll start to get very tiring and your muscles will start to fatigue and it's at that point that your training and brain take over to make sure you carry on going at the pace you know you can manage you're not going to have the stimulus of a race screen to follow or just somebody to chase if you're on your own you can load up previous rows I suppose you can set a pace boat on your monitor race that but you have to be properly focused to make sure you don't give in when it gets hard okay and then the other thing is that we'll do a big long warm up for it to make sure you're ready but then it's only 500 meters of effort so unless you're actually racing what I recommend is when you're done with your 500 meter test just slip into a row like this again 20 minutes at a low stroke rate and a low pace you're always always welcome to add on long slow meters after a fast session 
any session you do, if you want to do 20 minutes, uh, 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 20, all the 20s, then do it. It's the other way around that I have a problem with. That if you do a long, slow row and then finish it off with a 500 meter test, which means that you aren't sufficiently balancing your workouts if everything's always got an element of top tier fast remember I want this to be a, like a sawtooth for you or an M really where start at the bottom on session one up to a top down to a bottom up to a top down to a bottom for most of the training weeks fair enough this one started at the top and ends at the top but that's because it's race week you get what I mean if it's programmed a bottom tier day keep it all at bottom tier if it's programmed top tier then as long as you make sure to push when you're meant to push then by all means add on a bottom tier on the end if you're wanting to do extra meters which right now it's the winter holiday challenge which is all about munching up meters to raise money for charity so I'm all for you doing as many meters as you can in order to raise money seven minutes to go let's have a status report on technique as being this is your last chance to grind it in before your test in the next session so let's just think about posture at the front I want you powerful up on your sit bones with a strong back not talking about bolt upright like a plank of wood like powerful as though you're ready for action so up on your sit bones ready for action with a slight lean forwards into one o'clock which should mean your shoulders are over your hips or past your hips if you've got that lean forwards and you're on your sit bones so that's the difference there is I want your shoulders forwards and if you have your hips tucked under you so they're not you're not on your sit bones you can't get your shoulders past your hips so it's a really good thing to concentrate on is that shoulders past hips powerful posture and try not to mention the carrot because I know it freaks some of you out so we'll leave the carrot out of this give him a rest and then as you drive back with the legs with straight arms at the front you want to hold that posture and that lets that push the surge from your legs build through your back 
you find that your drive down the rail is really quick as though you're just flying backwards there's a good chance this build of surge at the front isn't happening for you that you're not connecting that you're not hanging off the handle as you push with your legs it's almost like you're in this momentary state of floating in midair where you're surging the power pressing into the machine it's like it momentarily holds you in space as you put that power in if you find you just slap to the back of the machine without this real whoosh feeling of surge and acceleration then I'd venture you've not got this hips and forward lean thing going on you should really feel your butt go light as you surge as you build up that blue fireball you should hear the machine go whoosh and if you press the second button down on your monitor that should change it to the force curve and what you want to see is a little hill being created that grows as you surge into the machine and then tapers off at the back as the power goes out but if you've got a really flat line rather than that big peak again I'd say you're not loading in the power with the forward lean in the straight arms because at 20 strokes a minute remember it should still take you a second for your drive and then two seconds for your recovery if you're finding you're whizzing down the rail in like half a second no matter how tall you are you're probably not connecting at the front properly maybe your butt is scooting before the connection so you're robbing yourself of the length of drive who knows but really try and think about that connect and surge as you drive from the front of the machine and that way you'll be developing the power transfer more efficiently Uh, heart rate's gone on the blink again time to change the batteries last stroke there we go and that's us done with our stirring of the tank session so that should have you all primed and ready for your 500 meter race or 500 meter test no matter how you're doing it okay right so let's get into let's do the two and a half minute cool down again same as the last session where we do 30 seconds and then we'll do the single leg and the uh, what they call the pick drills where you 
pick parts of the stroke. Is that why it's called a pick drill? Who knows? I've always wondered. Right, in three, two, one, go. So nice, gentle stroke rate and pace, especially because we were just doing all that at a nice gentle <laughs> stroke rate and pace. So you're just making sure you're keeping moving a little bit here before we move into the drills, which are coming up after this next stroke. So put one foot on the ground, continue rowing. So we're just going to do what we usually do for the warm up. Nice bit of single leg to start and then we'll do back only and arms and then we'll do legs only. Okay, last stroke on this side. Let's swap feet. Continue rowing. Make sure you still connect. Even after today's session, still make sure you're not sleepwalking through your stroke here. It's very easy to see a cool down as a not putting much effort down. But I want you to just continue to make use of your time in the rowing machine. Last stroke here, put both feet back in, straight legs, and just continue rowing with your back and arms. Maybe a slight bend to your knees to stop locking out any hamstring issues, but no actual power coming from a leg drive, please. It's all just your back and your arms. Two more strokes here, one more. And it's slide to the front, straight arms, press out the front. Make sure and hold that position I was constantly banging on about. And it's only really that connection at the front that you're worrying about with the forward lean and catching the flywheel. Don't worry about power from your legs. This is all about timing with straight arms. One more stroke. And we're done. So that's it. Week five, session four is done. Week five, session five is race day, which we should all be looking forward to. Let's try and hit PB. Remember, be mentally strong. Even if during the race you look as though you might not be getting where you want to go, keep going, see if you can go faster. Be mentally strong for this. Prepare yourself. Think about how you're going to succeed. Don't let any negativity crop in before you get started. You've been training hard for this and this is your test. And if it doesn't go well, you just do another test and keep on training, keep on going until you get to where you want to be. Because that's the beauty of this machine. The more you train, the faster you get, the happier you'll be. <laughs> I promise. Anyway, so hashtag for today is stir the tanks. Okay, so hashtag stir the tanks. Um, thanks so much for joining me in this entire training plan make sure and click subscribe and click the bell for notifications and do whatever you need to do in your podcast and leave messages and check out the facebook group and go to twitter go to instagram and just type row along and you'll see me everywhere i'm taking over man i'm taking over i'm not i'm not but hey you and me together that's all we need isn't it? have a good day Bye bye